Hi everybody, you tuned into On the Rocks with Roxanne. Today was a beautiful end of September experience at the Denver Zoo. Just coming out of incarceration, I recommend to anyone trying to exploit the city and what it has to offer. It is so important when getting out to experience the life of the city and the place that you are in. Now, on one hand, I felt sadness for the animals because I could very much relate to being in confinement and having no control over anything that happens in your life, especially when they gave prison tours and people from the outside came into the facility to observe us. So this segment is going to be about the facility I was in and I'm going to just describe it as I go through the pictures uh, that I saw at the zoo and I'm gonna talk about my facility and what it was like. It reminded me of a permanent enclosed college campus. We all had keys to our living spaces. There were seven buildings that housed between 60 to 80 inmates. The larger rooms held six people and the smaller rooms were two man rooms. You could not go into the building that you didn't live in. The buildings had different programs. Like for instance, building four was a therapeutic community where they offered structured rehab and counseling programs. They kept that unit away from general population because it was a serious program where they offered confidentiality uh, for the inmates and that participated in it and they ran their own programs and they didn't want any outside influences uh, to be influencing the women that were in there. They had building one that was called the incentive unit. You could go on any movement to the yard or gym, your meal hours were extended, and there were video games and craft rooms in the building. More social socialization hours available, and in that unit you had to have no major write-ups and be in good compliance standing with the following reg regulations. A lot of inmates in unit one had long sentences, so they liked to stay in that unit. Now, Unit 2 is being transformed into a self-governing run only by inmates, a community that was all their own. There were no guards in the unit and no guards on duty, and each person had their own rooms. All the incentives of Unit 1 that were offered were also offered in Unit 2. Unit 2 uh, had a lot of bonuses. You could get normal approved clothes from outside sources such as Walmart or Amazon. And these things were usually ordered uh, by you, uh, to you by your friends and family. So as long as it was approved by the staff and you had a family member that could order you something from Walmart and from Amazon, I would see girls walking around in jeans, t-shirts, have these great shoes, great hygiene products that we all would just kill to have. Now in unit two, you had to be interviewed and selected. So major politics going on there. You had to be friends with the people that live there in unit two. Absolutely no write-ups or breaking any rules if you live there. Everyone tells on everyone in prison, so you just need to know that. Um, if you have great family support for ordering things and you have unlimited resources and money, unit two is the way to go. As long as you can play the politics game, you're in. I was just uh, getting started and I saw that it was really working well and a lot of people that had long sentences were in there because they were going to be there for a very long time and they, they wanted that lifestyle. They wanted to feel more normalized and normalization. Uh, it seemed to be enjoyed and if I was there longer I might have considered going into Unit 2. Now Units 3 five and six were off the chain what would happen is people that were coming in from denver which is a maximum to medium security prison uh came into pueblo which is where i was at la vista they called that prison and that's the units you would get put in right when you arrived that's also the units that if you got kicked out of one two or seven you would go in and start over there and those units, you would have to work in the kitchen. And that is a terrible job. 
you'd have to start at 3.30 in the morning until 1.30 in the afternoon, or the afternoon shift started at 12.30 p.m. till about 7.30 p.m. And it was just nonstop, go, 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 tons of uh, dishes to do, people shuffling in and out. So you served about 700 inmates when you worked in the kitchen and it was just ongoing, it never stopped. So those units were like the starter units that people that got in trouble or people that had just got there would go into. So that's kind of the layout. Now I wanna talk about unit seven. That's the re-entry unit. That's the unit that I was in and that they had the dog team in. So I was in unit seven on an eight person dog team and we were with the general population. So we had the luxury of trying to train dogs and have general population all up in the dog's face and all up in our face all the time. It was really stressful. Unit seven was the reentry unit. So people had this, I don't give a bleep mentality about everything. They knew they were getting out. They stopped caring, stopped cleaning up after themselves. And it was just really loud, really obnoxious, really dirty, you had dog hair everywhere. And it just was kind of a tough unit to be in because I knew that a lot of people were leaving very quickly and I knew that I had a long time. But you just start accepting the fact that you can't change anything and this is the way it is and your choices got you to this point in your life and you just go on. But you just try to really maximize on the benefits that are offered there, such as this beautiful gymnasium. We had this outdoor track. We had a softball field. It was green. It was beautiful. They had people that would work maintenance, and they would always be mowing the lawn, weed whacking. Uh, they had a huge greenhouse, and we grew all of our own flowers and planted them all throughout the campus was very, very beautiful. And the girls worked really hard and took really great pride in that place. I love the gym. They had a lot of equipment. They offered CrossFit. They offered a lot of programs, Dance to be Free, which I'll be touching on in one of my later segments. But just being at the zoo just kind of reminded me of my living conditions and what I was going through in prison. And I just wanted to share them with you as I was at the zoo. Thank you so much for tuning in to On the Rocks with Roxanne and sharing this experience with me. I hope that you've all enjoyed it and will join me for my next episode.